Hey everybody, it is Mike, and I am here with Victor of True Rookie Cards. Victor, how are you today? Mike, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, why don't you tell people about your book that you just published on Friday that I'm really excited about for you. Go ahead and, and share. I'm actually going to share my screen here and show the book, if you don't mind. Yeah, it's um, a, a passion project that I started a, a couple of years ago. And it's 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 one of them things that if you follow my content, you, you, you basically kind of know what the book is about. But I'm more along the lines of reestablishing some some boundaries with the rookie card. I just feel like uh, there has been such a we have veered off so far when it comes to what a rookie card is and what it isn't. And it's one of them things that when I came back to the hobby in 2014, I just found myself really confused and, and frustrated with the state of the rookie card. I, I was literally at a loss of understanding how somebody can have a player can have five years worth of cards and all of them being considered rookie cards or how we go from having a handful of rookie cards to a player now having two to 3000 rookie cards. And, and that, all of that just had me perplexed. So I started digging into this thing and, and the more I was learning, the more I was fascinated with the story of the rookie card. And it's one of them things that I started writing about on my blog uh, but I, I quickly turned that into YouTube videos. And the longer I was doing the YouTube videos, the more um, uh, I started sharing what I was learning with my audience and the more questions were coming at me. And that just kind of helped me create this system, a system that helps me flush through all the fluff so I can kind of know which ones are truly rookie cards and which ones are not so much, you know, that they're not, they're not as strong as, as the true rookie cards. And so this system that I developed, you know, you, you got to start with a proper understanding and that proper understanding starts with knowing what the history of the rookie card, knowing how it evolved from its inception to today. And then and I, I started carving out or piecing together that puzzle. And once I did that, and once I created this system, well, a lot of my viewers um, were recommending to me that I should write a book on this and, and I should um, make this available to everybody. So I took that idea um, and I and I kind of ran with it. Yeah, and you've done a great job. I've started reading. I've read the first 20 or 30 pages or so. And it's really good. Uh, I also wanted to just shout out your YouTube for a second because I said True Rookie Cards because that's the name of your book, but your YouTube is actually called uh, Victor the Rookie Card Specialist. So I want to make sure that is on there if I can. Uh, there we go. Victor the Rookie Card Specialist. Uh, you have a unique way of getting through to your audience and talking very smoothly and intelligently about your opinions and why specific things aren't or are rookie cards. I well, want to talk. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was going to say, well, you know how it is, Mike, uh, as a content creator yourself. It's one of them things where we have to be like really careful with what we say, because everything we say is put under a microscope and we're living under a, 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 a trend or a, a a generation that fact checks everything you say. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to come to the table, right? Prepared yeah. And, yeah. and ready to, to, to drop some facts. Yeah. So I wanted to talk through some interesting rookie card scenarios with you and get your opinion on them. I'm sure you've already spoken about most of these, if not all of them, but let's just start with Lou Pinella. It's one of the most interesting rookie card scenarios to me. Do you know? Do you know what his rookie card year was? Well, he's got like what three or four of them. Right. He had nineteen sixty four. I'll share my screen again. Yeah. And I'll show. Uh, where is it? 
Lou Pinella, three rookie years. He has the 68 and 69 rookie stars right here. And then he also has the 1964 rookie stars. Yeah. So he had four years in between rookie stars and then had another one after that. Yeah. Which one would you consider his rookie card? Um, well, it, it's one of them things where understanding the history of things, you know, the rookie card wasn't really a thing until about 1974. So we have to extend a little bit of a grace there because prior to 1974, rookie cards were merely, they were, they were known as first a player's first card and they did not have any hype whatsoever. There were actually cards that were considered a nuisance. They were more for um, a, a necessary evil to complete a set. Uh, so, you know, 1960s, it, it's one of them things where a lot of the rookie card established rules were, were non-existent. So, but then we, we come to using some logical, some common sense, right? And, and we have to maybe think of, well, what was, what was his, the first year that he played? I think that's a good question to ask. And, and in my system of, of figuring out the fluff, it's what I do. I, I begin to ask myself a series of questions. One of them being, you know, what was the first year that Lou Pinilla played in the big leagues? And I don't know that answer, unfortunately, off the top of my head, but can you see it on my screen here? It's, it's just spinning. Uh, let's see, it's, this you could just tell us my stream yard. So in 1964, he had, he played in four games, got one plate appearance in yeah. 1968. He played in six games and got six plate appearances. And then in 69, he became a regular player. In 69, he became a regular player. So I'm assuming those were like a, he was like a September call up for a couple of years, perhaps. That, that's my assumption as well. Yeah. yeah. And he was drafted in what year? He was drafted in, uh, there was not a draft back then, was there? Or at least it doesn't, how did they, baseball have, reference yeah. doesn't show. I don't remember. If it doesn't show, if it, wasn't, if it doesn't show, it's because he wasn't drafted. He was probably just signed. But yeah, it, it's one of them things where, see, now we have to begin to ask certain key questions. And that's one of them, okay? Uh, but there's a multiple of, of ways that we can look at it. And then we have to, basically understand kind of the the history of the card manufacturing at that time and, and what they were up against and a lot of times you know they put players in that that were not even in the league yet you know and 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 so that's part of the complexities mike of trying to figure it out you can't really i wish we can you know ask the questions to tops somebody who was around back then that can give us some kind of clarity but i don't I don't think they're going to have any answers for us, really. There, there isn't going to be any rhyme or reason. So in Lou Pinilla's case, it's one of them things where, you know, what's what's your view? What's your conviction? A lot of people like, you know, cards that were of players like the before they were in the big leagues, like what I consider pre-rookie cards. Some people, it doesn't matter. The 1964 is his first appearance, and that's what they're going to go with. Other people are going to go with the 68 because that's the year that he first became a regular player. So um, there's really no arguing those types of situations because there's you can't tie any rhyme or reason or any logic behind it. So it, it's in one of those instances, I usually – would tag all three of those cars. I would identify them as an asterisk RC, meaning that this is a, a, a debatable rookie card because some because there's varying views on it. So I would give those kind of cards a completely different identifier. <clears throat> yeah, and I just Googled it, and the MLB draft started in 65, and he was okay. already signed with Baltimore in 64. So that's why there's no draft information for him. Okay. Uh, I also want to just say, I will put, hopefully I remember, I've been getting better about it. I will put the link to your book in the description of this video for people to go and buy. Uh, I hope people do because it's, 
first of all, I want to support a small, uh, you know, YouTuber like me, somebody who's out here doing stuff that they enjoy, somebody who loves the hobby like me, and who's written a great book. So I hope people will go and buy it. Uh, link will be in the description. I'm going to close out my Lupinella. Now, what about a guy? Um, wh why don't you tell me, how do you define a rookie card? Let's ignore the, was it was 2006, the MLBPA put in a rule. How would you define it yourself? Me personally, I, I it, it's a very, you know, it's a very traditional view of what a rookie card is, but it is the a player's first card featured in the base set from a from a card manufacturer that is fully licensed somebody who actually has permission the legal right to print that card so that's that's important to me it might not be important to everybody but that's how i i view a true rookie card coming from the base set so when i say base set that eliminates anything like inserts and subsets the, that that traditionally does not fall in the window of what a true rookie card is. Um, today in the modern era, you have a player in the base set, but they'll put four, five, sometimes even six cards of that player in the base set. Well, then I lean on traditional definition of what a true rookie card is, and that is the first card featured in the fate base set. So if Aaron Judge has six tops cards in the base set, the first card is going to get the true rookie card designation. Okay. I gotcha. What about a situation like Roger Clemens, who was in 1984 Fleer Update and then 1985 Tops and 85 Donruss, and etc.? Yeah. Later in the book, I, I dedicate an entire chapter to to the XRC situation that was going on in the 80s. And I was able to get some some really helpful intel from Dr. Beckett. And it, it got to the point where I was really, I had my hands tied with the XRC situation. And I reached out to Dr. Beckett and I says, Jim, I need, you need to fill in the holes for me here because I, here's what I'm finding. And I'm finding all this research everywhere or all this information on certain websites. And it's like contradicting each other. So I wanted, I needed to get it straight from the horse's mouth, and I was able to get some, some really good insights on what was going on in that time frame with the XRCs. And, but for me, the all XRCs that were created, it's I give all of those cards an asterisk RC, but I give it to both. I'll give it to the '84 Fleer update, and I'll give it to the '85 Fleer and all the '85 tops. All of those get an asterisk RC because those are debatable rookie cards because of everything that the card manufacturers were were doing in that time frame. Okay. What is the greatest rookie card of all time? Subjective. Yeah. What, what's your opinion? <laughs> well, I'm. To me, it, it's one of them things where I only like. I shouldn't say I only like. I prefer cards that mean something to me. So that's why I say it's subjective to me. Um, Roberto Clemente um, is a guy that I really... Five tops. Yeah. Michael Jordan's rookie card, 86 oh. Fleer. Okay, so you're you're <laughs> taking a stand on this. Yeah, I am. Fleer. Yeah, 86 Fleer. Card. And why yeah. isn't the 84 star his rookie card, the card 101 of that set? Uh, because in order... And, and I explain it in the book. According to my definition, a true rookie card is a card that fully complies with the guidelines and, and best practices. And, and that 84 star at the time did, did not fully comply with the standards. The, the standards also included distribution. Yep. You have to have proper distribution. And those rules were established and followed for decades. And, and so we don't want to get too far into a rabbit hole here, Mike, because I yeah, don't want I, you I don't to want, get, <laughs> I don't want to take up your book here either. I, <laughs> no, I, I just, I don't want you to get a uh, backlash because uh, I've made a couple of videos on the topic. Let's just say those were some spicy videos. 
<laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, okay, so that's that's really good to know. So yeah, um, you know, and I and I respect both of them. Uh, I to be honest with you, when you, when we look at it and we filter the cards to the rookie card guidelines and best practices, both of them fall short. So so both of them have their issues, and that's how come again, as a compromise. I say asterisk RC for both of them so that historically collectors in the future will know that this is a, these two cards have been debated. It, 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 they have some kind of um, issue with them that doesn't fully comply with what a rookie card actually is. Yeah. The generally accepted Bob Cousy rookie card is his 1957 tops. He, there's no basketball cards from 52 to 57 or something like that. And then, so he, uh, his, he started playing in 1950, 51 season. There was a 51 Burke Ross card of Bob Cousy, but he was wearing his college uniform in the card. I'll actually, uh, I'll bring it up here for anybody who's interested in seeing it. If, if my screen will allow me to share it, uh, it is right here. Let's see if it will show it um if you if you're wearing your college uniform and it's your and it's released during your rookie season can that be a rookie card no no um and and a lot of that is you know again in 1957 or 51 there there was no rhyme or reason to the rookie card it, it was a non-existent thing uh it's only later but if you're looking at it through the lens of the rules of modern day, uh, post 2006, from what the Players Association, once they got involved, their ruling was that a player's rookie card has to be when that player debuts on a pro level roster and plays in a pro level game. At that point, those cards can be considered rookie cards. Anything before that, cannot. And the reason why the Players Association got involved is because of the confusion and the debate that was going on prior to that. The gimmicks that manufacturers were producing in an effort to get that player's card into their sets first. And, and so that's how come they had to step in. But Burke Ross, let's, that is, um, that's a, like a food and beverage issue. What is the distribution method, right, of, yeah. of a Burke Ross? Somebody so, will have to tell us in the comments. I am yeah, no Burke Ross the, expert. The, uh, the, the thing is, the, when this was all started in the 1980s, there, the spirit of all of this was that there has to be fair and equal distribution for everybody. When we start taking something that was printed for a regional area of the country, and not everybody had access to it. It wasn't available in packs, but maybe in a pack of hot dogs or, or what have you. That that those are um, those are not the standard measures of distribution. So not all collectors had a fair and equal chance at owning that card. Therefore, those types of things have never been viewed as rookie cards food and beverage issues have never been for that reason yeah and it was an accepted practice mike nobody ever argued that point nobody ever thought of a food and beverage issue being an actual rookie card but in the era of you know it's got to be scarce and it's got to be worth money and only if there's only two of them available well that's good for me and the heck with everybody else well, that flies in the face of the traditional view of fair and equal. Yep. You see my screen now? Yes. Was this intentional by Tops putting a 2019 Shohei rookie card logo on here, even though it was the year after his all of his rookie cards? <laughs> or is this a, an unintentional error card? Well, if I want to be cynical, I guess I can say, <laughs> I guess I can, I can write, scream from the mountaintops that they did it on purpose. And this is all gimmicks and shenanigans. Uh, and sometimes I wear that hat, but I don't know. I, it, to me, this is, this is just a, a mistake that, and, and this is where the, they have to tighten the belt too. I mean, card manufacturers 
I don't know what they're thinking sometimes, man, but some of the stuff they pull with rookie cards is just, it's unreal. Yeah. 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 I was the same way when I got back into the hobby in 2020 after, well, I don't know, a 17 year break. I was surprised that inserts and I was, I was buying basketball blaster blasters and finding that they would put like the instant impact cards were rookie yeah. cards on, on basketball. And I was just like, this, this isn't a rookie card. This surprises me that they're putting the rookie card logo on here. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a fan of rated rookie Don Russ cards? I love them. I, I yeah. love the rated rookie. I really do. Um, I am a little upset with uh, Panini baseball product. I am not a fan of Panini baseball product at all. Um, I, I think it's, I don't know how they are even allowed to print that stuff. To me, it is a loophole. A lot of these card manufacturers, when it comes to the guidelines that the Players Association put out, it's not a matter of looking to comply. It's looking for loopholes. And, and I think they flirt with the rules and they find a gray area and they exploit that gray area. And then they start putting stuff out there like Panini baseball. But I, I'm careful saying that because I, I hurt people's feelings when I say that about Panini baseball, but it's not, it's not nothing against, you know, the, the cards or the players or the, or the hobby. It's, my my contention with Panini Baseball is the gimmicks that are played by the card manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that covers my questions. I want to make sure you have an opportunity to talk about your book and, and sell people on your book, which I think they should go buy. But why don't you go ahead and also on your channel? Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, Mike, yeah, the, the book really, uh, and I made a, a video on this recently, but it, it, it's it's why did I make this book? You know, a lot of times, you know, people think that a person makes a book for, you know, money or, or they just want to be, they want to have clout or some kind of thing like that. But that that's the furthest thing from the truth. And to be honest with you, I've been studying the the, the rookie card since 2015. This isn't something I started, you know, a couple days ago. And, and I started with articles and it's grown into YouTube videos. And it's, and it's something that, to be honest with you, that I've been asked to do. And, and that's uh, those who uh, get what I'm saying when they take the time to understand what I'm teaching, they, when, and they, they, they get it, right? And I've had a lot of people, Mike, reach out to me over the years and saying, hey, you, you need to put this in book form. You know, this, this history of the rookie card, that's, you can't find that everywhere. That's valuable information that the hobby should have access to. And, and so I ran with that, but also I saw the need, Mike, it, it just, uh, there's just so much, um, uh, so many people are misinformed and, and the novice collector uh, comes in and he sees two to 3000 rookie cards and they don't, they don't know which cards to get. They, they, they can get duped into buying a little $3 insert and just because it has a rookie card logo on it. They think they're buying something wonderful when in reality it's, you know, it, it, it isn't that good of a card or, or you get the returning collector like I was that came back in 2014 and I was, I was confused, man. And I was frustrated. And then you get, you know, uh, to be honest with you, Mike, my message is not, my message is one of truth. My message is one that goes against the grain. And and that really upsets the apple cart, especially when we're talking flippers and card dealers and investors. They don't want to hear what I have to say. They're opposed to what I have to say. Um, and, and many will label me a, a purist or an old head or I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm out of touch. And, and I say, um, I, I have a a lot of evidence that counters all of those allegations. And, and it's not, it, it's not a matter of upsetting the apple cart or, or trying to change the hobby. That's not my, my, my intentions at all. It's, it's all about tightening up the belt a little bit, you know, let's, I don't think a narrow def, definition of a rookie card is any good either. I, I think the, the, the rules that were in place in the 1980s are not conducive to today's hobby. So why, 
Um, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that a narrow definition isn't any good, but neither is a broad one. Because now a broad one, we, we start to um, veer off and, and, and we start to call things that are not because we have an agenda, because we're trying to make money. And everything in the hobby now is all about money. And, and I'm against that. I'm opposed to that. And not that it's bad to make money. I sell cards all the time. I have an eBay store. But my thing is, when that is the primary focus, I think things are out of order. And that's just my opinion. And as a content creator, we're entitled to our opinion, right? Encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, the YouTube channel, um, I had foot surgery in 2020 and, and man, my blog was just absolutely going nowhere. I mean, <laughs> I had foot surgery in early 2021. Which Did you really? What drove me to start my channel? Wow. That's when I started mine, when I had yeah. foot surgery. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And, and it's, it's, um, you know, I, I can't say that um, it's been slow growth. I don't think it has. Uh, I think, you know, my channel started really slow. And then I ended up um, two years in, I ended up just changing everything. I, I, I ended up deleting a bunch of videos because I wanted my channel to specifically deal with rookie cards only. And so I deleted a bunch of videos. I changed the channel name, which they really recommend you don't do. So I literally started my channel completely redid it two years ago. So when it comes to rookie cards, I'm two years old. <laughs> <laughs> so your rookie season was 2022. Correct. Yeah. Okay. This was great, Victor. I wish you the best of luck with your book and your channel, because I think you have a great voice that should be heard. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Hang tight. Everybody, make sure you are buying or buying Victor's book, subscribing to his channel. Links are in the description of this video. We will see you all soon. Victor, I will be right with you here in a moment. Mm -hmm.